All right, power users. Here is Kelly's favorite power user shortcuts. Without touching my mouse, I'm going to hit the letter M for marquee. And I'll click and drag to make a rectangular marquee. Command D on the Mac will deselect, or Control D on Windows. If I want to switch from rectangular to elliptical marquee, Shift M will switch to elliptical. And let's imagine I want to select this lemon. So I click and drag, but I missed. I'm not getting the lemon perfectly. Without letting your mouse go, hold down the space bar and it lets me move. I still haven't let go of my mouse, but I let go of the space bar with my mouse still held down, and I'll click and drag again. Space bar to move, let go of space bar to size. So to do that whole portion of selecting this lemon, make sure you never let your mouse go once you start. That is immensely helpful if my goal was to get these two lemons to use as an accent in a piece. If I need to add to a selection, Shift always adds. But when I hold down Shift and start way up here to click and drag and select, I rarely start in the right spot. So I'm keeping Shift held down, I'm keeping my mouse held down, and I add space bar into that. Let go of only space bar, but Shift and my mouse are still down, and I can stretch. Hold down space bar to move. Let go of space bar, but keep Shift and your mouse button down, and you'll have a great selection of these two lemons. So I could choose Edit, Copy, File, New, Two Lemons, and click OK. I will paste, and there are my two lemons. Now this doesn't have the detail I'm looking for, but just an illustration on how I use selections and add to selections that get two elliptical selections that are aligned the way I want them to by using that space bar trick. Now here's another note. If I want to move the lemons, right now I have layer one. I'm going to name it lemons or two lemons. If I make another selection of, let's say, the center of the lemon, my right arrow key, after I let go, moves one pixel at a time. Left arrow goes back. Up and down arrows work. But if you want to make bigger moves, use your Shift key with arrows. Shift right arrow is 10 pixels at a time. Shift right arrow, 10 more. So Shift in your arrows, move 10 at a time, where if I don't use Shift and just use my arrows, it only moves one pixel at a time. Shift always adds to a selection. So if I want more circles, Shift, Shift, and then I have three that I might be using to make a pattern. So I could do Select Inverse to grab everything but the circles and just hit my Delete or Backspace key and then Command D to deselect or Control D to deselect. And there's an interesting web pattern that I may want to use as the background for something. Now I've talked about deselect. I've talked about Shift to add to a selection. Maybe you want to subtract from a selection. I'll go back to my lemonade and let's imagine I want to get just this spout. So I hit Command D on the Mac to deselect or Control D on Windows to deselect. I will switch to my Quick Selection tool, and I will use my right bracket key. The brackets are next to the letter P on your keyboard. Right bracket makes the brush bigger. Left bracket makes it smaller. So 15, right bracket 20, right bracket 25, and now I can paint a good selection in of just this spout. And if you want to get very careful edges, you would go smaller. Left bracket is down to 20, left bracket down to 15. And I'm pretty close with this. Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows will tighten up the selection. 
but I never do anything with a selection except for the circles that I did earlier because I wanted a nice circular edge. I never do anything with an object that I'm selecting until I run Refine Edge. So I will hit Refine Edge, choose on a white background to really see what I've got. And since this is an object, I will do a lot of smoothing. There we go. And help the contrast. Nice, sharper, smoother edge. And maybe I'll contract it a little bit. Sorry, not contrast. That's for sharper edges. But shift edge to contract or tighten a little bit. So if I look at this before I'm finished, you have to be careful with smoothing. Smoothing may round off too many shapes where it doesn't look true to its original shape. So I'll dial smoothing back down until it doesn't round into the corners. Some corner rounding or cutting off will happen with smoothing. So just be careful about how you use it. You can combine smoothing and contrast to get a much better selection. Or I could clean up that little bump before I started. But if I check Show Original, Before, Awful, After, Much Better. And if it looks completely different shape, then I've used too much smoothing. So I'll dial smoothing down a little bit, and it'll come back to its truer shape. And maybe I just clean up the little bit of bumpiness once I've finished with my selection. So I will output to New Layer, or actually, new document with layer mask. So I'm ripping this out as I commit to it. Had to make an adjustment. Now output to new document with layer mask. I'll click OK. There is my spout. If I zoom in with Command Plus or Control Plus, I could begin my cleanup work on the edges. This way, I've never harmed or removed anything. It's protected on a layer mask, so I could begin my cleanup by clicking the layer mask thumbnail. But we're not here to clean up today. I wanted to show you Shift to Add to a Selection, Selection, Shift to Add, Shift to Add, Alter Option to take away from a selection, so cutting semicircles or Pac-Men out of this, Command D or Control D to deselect, Make a selection in the wrong spot. Don't let go of your mouse. Spacebar will move that selection. And finally, arrow keys to nudge and shift and your arrow keys for bigger nudges. You could also use that on entire layers. If I deselect with Command D or Control D and I'm on my Move tool, arrow keys to move, shift and your arrow keys are bigger moves. And the last thing I should finish with is if you make a selection, let's go back to my lemonade. Maybe I want to do a whole weird perspective thing on this, but I'm not happy with my selection area. Select, transform selection only transforms the marching ants. So now I've scaled that and I've just got a shadow of the spout. I can use Command on the Mac or Control on Windows to give it perspective and really reshape that. And I'll press Return or Enter to finish, but I should finish off by saying, Select Transform Selection just modifies your marching ants. It can make them bigger or smaller. And when you're transforming, you could use Command on the Mac to add perspective or that's the control key on Windows to add perspective. If you're not holding down Command or Control, it just scales, and Shift keeps it proportional when scaling. So power users, get out there and try all the shortcuts with any of your images, but practice with the elliptical marquee, rectangular marquee. I'll apply these changes. Use the Quick Selection tool or even the Lasso tool with Shift to Add, Option or Alt to take away. Hope you've enjoyed this tour of my favorite shortcuts for selections.